All right, so I'm not sure exactly what past me was thinking when I said I'd post another video to help with that worksheet, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, highlight two things that I have to help you with that normal worksheet. Um, all of them can be found here on, um, I guess I should be in student view, but in the course resources area. So the first is the normal cheat sheet. I actually redid this because I didn't like the one I had previously. Um, or rather posted a different one. I, I looked at the one previously and I had, I had uh, switched X and Z in the um, formula for inverse or tricky inverse. So you could have gotten in trouble. So um, the normal cheat sheet breaks down the three different types of normal problems. You have direct normal problems. You're gonna be asked to find a probability, percent, proportion. These are all keywords to say area under the curve. And you will have to be given the mean, the standard deviation, a value that we want to use as a cutoff, and then the direction that we would be shading our curve in. Um, so you can see here, in all of these situations, this one says the probability of the incubation for, I have no idea what this is supposed to say, for um, an individual is less than six days. So six less uh, would be the less side. And then you have some other keywords here, less than, at most, no more than. All of these are things to say shade to the left of the curve. Um, if it was something with above, we have more than all of this. Um, and a note here, um, there are going to be two of these on the exam. So uh, this is super important. Finding these is pretty straightforward. So in this case, I made up this silly question where we have a normal distribution with a mean of 7 and a standard deviation of 1.2. If we're looking for a probability or an area under the curve, we can use this um, I don't even know if I have my thing open. Sorry, I'm just making sure I'm actually recording. Eh, let's hope so. Um, so 7, 1.2, and then you just decide which one it is. And you can see here on that um, cheat sheet, I've given you below, above, and between as the different keywords that you could be doing here. So we'd be looking for, in this case, a below 6. And the nice thing here is it will shade this and give me the answer. Our probability is 0 0.2023. So all you need to do to show corresponding work, you could write direct, you could draw your curve, uh, have the word below, something there. On the worksheet, you have to draw me a curve. Um, in terms of the curve, I expect to see three things. Um, that is the mean marked, the cutoff marked, and the shading in the correct direction. Um, ideally, you do what I have here, which is a nice little question mark for the things that you don't know, but that's not required. Um, the second type is inverse norm. So in these questions, we're asked to find the value or for a particular percentage or percentile. Uh, in these, we will definitely have units in our answer. Uh, you'll be given the mean, the standard deviation, and the actual area. So like I said, seeing a percentage is a really good clue that we're doing an inverse problem. And again, you're going to use the formula, those little calculators. In this case, you're going to use the inverse calculator. So this question, we're still doing with the incubation period. Uh, so our mean is still 7, our standard deviation is still 1.2, but we're looking for the longest 5%. So we can go here. Uh, 7, 1.2. Uh, we do need to be careful when we convert from percents to decimals. Uh, every single calculator uses the decimal version instead of the percent. So 0 0.05. Um, if you do 0.5, it'll be right at the middle and hopefully you'll recognize you made a mistake. Um, and then you have to think about what longest means. Longest means they would take longer than average, right? So this drawing makes sense and this value is correct. So we would throw this back on with our units, which in this case was days. But if it was supposed to be shortest, we could change it to below. If it was middle 5%, which makes no sense, but if it were, we could click the between and it'll give us the middle. Um, really easy to use. I think even easier than using normal CDF, especially if a question has multiple parts um, because you're able to just keep reusing it uh, without having to restart. The last type of question, which is the back page of that worksheet, are the tricky inverse questions. Uh, and these ones, you're asked to find the parameter, to find mean or standard deviation, which means you can't use these calculators as they're meant to be used because you're missing a piece. Um, so what you have to do this is do this in a two-step process. So in this case, 
Um, we have to find our z-score. So zero, uh, and to find a z-score, you have to use a mean of zero and standard deviation of one. It doesn't matter if you have a given value for some other, for one of these. You will have one of these given. Just know you're gonna use zero and one. And then again, be careful here about your directional. So percentage or percentile is a below, sorry. Um, again, uh, think about whether or not the drawing makes sense when you finish. Uh, there's obviously, then you can use the inverse formula and do algebra like I talked about in the videos. Um, but I also have two formulas here given out where you could just plug and you don't have to do any algebra. Um, and there will be one of these on the exam. It will be an upload your work, so you'll have to have all your supporting work to get your points. For everything on exam two, you're gonna have to have supporting work. Um, if you don't, you're not gonna receive credit. And the real reason here is that it's super easy. A lot of the questions are numeric entry, so it's super easy to type something in wrong and miss points or to do the wrong side of the curve. And, and I don't want you to lose all five points, all six points of a problem. So having you guys upload work is an easy way for me to give points. And you know, I've, even just writing tricky inverse would get you a point. Drawing the curve would get you a point. So there's a lot of ways to get partial credit even if you get stuck on a problem.